this video yesterday. Woohoo! And this, I have Stack with me, so if you hear weird, crazy baby noises, it's him. I hope it's not going to be too distracting. Uh, he doesn't want to nap. Okay. So today, I'm doing my first ever collaboration with a lovely lady called Bruna Mibbs. And she's also an illustrator. And she comes from Brazil, but she now lives in the United States. And she does the most stunning, sophisticated, etching, almost styled uh, ink illustrations. And she also does beautiful watercolors. And her palette and her style is very, very, like I said, sophisticated, feminine, and kind of vintage looking. And that's really beautiful. And I think you should go definitely go check her video out. And her channel and her Instagram is stunning. I wish that I could have consistency in my photos like she does. But I guess I have to work on it. So anyways, she contacted me and asked if she, I would like to talk about my top favorite inspiring art books and I thought that was a fun idea so today I will show you a couple of my favorite art books that I look to for little inspiration, ideas, stuff like that. So, good boy Stike! Hope I hope a spike is spike! Yeah! He's so cute. Okay, the first book I want to talk about is Andy Warhol. Now, this book per se isn't that inspiring because it's mainly text, but I do find Andy Warhol's work very inspiring for my work because I love the pop art style, and I also like that he just drew everyday things like a soup can, and I like to try to do that too, but in my feminine kind of way. So, going to Andy Warhol exhibits is really inspiring for me, and fun, I guess. I don't know, this one was from the exhibit he had in Stockholm here at Modern Museum. I don't remember that what, when that was, but it was a couple years ago. And it was pretty extensive. And you got to learn more about his work. I really like this. Is this mouth? Maybe. And uh, the ink drying with a just a simple purple circle around the head, like that's pretty easy and stunning. And I of course love his flowers and his Marilyn Monroe portraits. But I think the Campbell soup can I think is the most fun because it's just it's just a soup can. You know? So that's for that one. Not maybe not the most exciting. And then the next one. I wish I was more inspired by this book, um, Hand Job it's called, about uh, hand lettering. And I wish that I would actually do more hand lettering, but I never, I never do. Um, but when I do, of course, I've had a couple of projects where I've had to do some hand lettering, but I definitely pick up this book. I've even tagged a few pages, which I'm not sure why. Um, but it's full of fun, different hand lettering styles, and the style is a little bit more, I don't know, like, graffiti, skateboarder style, maybe, which isn't really mine, but you can still, of course, like, take ideas from it and work, work from it. So I really like this book. A Catalog of Type by Michael Perry, and it, of course, has a cheeky title. <laughs> It's full of, like, every page has something that you could be inspired by. Lots of posters and different typesets, and there's tons and tons of different artists who do hand-drawn hand type, hand-drawn lettering. So it's not just Michael Perry, it's a whole catalog of different people. Alright, and then maybe my most beautiful book that I own is Manolo Blahnik's drawings, and I think you can figure out why this would inspire me, because of the fashion aspect and the illustration aspect, and the creativity also that he uses in his shoes is quite exciting. Um, yeah, 
these are beautiful. Some of them are but ugly too. <laughs> but yeah, this is a beautiful book. Just nice to flip through sometimes and take a look. There's nothing that I really reference in any of these books really that I'm going to show you because I am kind of afraid of copying too much. I want to combine a lot of things when I come up with an illustration or something or a design that I want to create. I try to take from lots and lots of different uh, sources so that I don't uh, copy because my style is pretty realistic so it, um, I could get caught real easily which is bad and I'm pretty bad at just using my imagination sometimes so I do use photos and I would say Pinterest is my biggest inspiration to be honest I don't look at books as much as I would like to and the last books that I wanted to share aren't art books but they are history books and um, they are by the Swedish author Hermann Lindqvist and they are about uh, the first one is about Sun Kung and the Sun King and the second one is by Madame de Pompadour which is uh, I think it was the Sun King's am I going to say something stupid? the Sun King's son's lover is uh, uh, Madame de Pompadour. I love reading about the 1700s. I love the architecture. I love the paint style, the paintings, the Rococo and new traditionalism. So that is really inspiring to me, even though it has nothing to do with my style when I when I actually draw. I do think my color palettes come from this softer, more pastel, a little girlier stuff like that. So I adore that. And one of the reasons that I really wanted to move to Europe and Sweden was because that there is so much 1700s history here. Um, but I somehow have never done in a collection inspired by the 1700s yet. But I have this, like, I need to do that this year. It's like one of my goals. Make a collection inspired by 1700s. Especially... Oh my goodness, you're so good! You're so excited about the <laughs> What? So, anyhow, I really want to um, create a collection. And I was even thinking that I should go through the entire process with you and let you know how the collection like comes to mind in my head, my gathering of inspiration, and all that stuff. So I think I will start that process and it'll be quite a few videos because otherwise it'd be like five hours long. <laughs> but that's an idea I have and let me know if you think that's interesting. Hopefully you do. But anyways, back to the books. There are a few pictures in here which I have tagged that I could possibly be inspired by. Let's see. But like ceramics. Old ceramics with their beautiful, delicate, hand-painted flowers, or, you know, like the classic 1700s dresses that are like full of ruffles and flowers and bows, and they're so pretty. Here's another one. Um, I did actually um, create a design one of my scarves was called Madame de Pompadour, and I did use this book as a reference when I created the, that design. And I took different aspects, like a certain ruffle around the uh, around the scarf I found here, or so I did use this once. So I'd say this is my most used book, and it's not even an art book, but it is history, and it has uh, many pictures of art. I like this author because he makes history is a little bit more fun, it's not very dry, it's kind of easy to read. should reread it actually. So yeah, those are my favorite art books and history books. Yeah, thanks so much for watching and I hope that you check out Bruna's work and I'll see you in internet land. Bye!